Hi, till now we have been seeing uh, various methods available in uh, lists, tuples, dictionaries, sets, and also now on strings. But you don't have to buy heart all this. So whenever you have any doubt, you can go to docs, docs.python.org and you can get all the methods available there in the documentation. Even in interviews when they ask you some question, if you are not sure about which method to ask, use, you can ask them that you want to just look at the docs and you want to write it. They will definitely allow you that. So you don't have to buy heart all this. I'm just telling, I'm just showing you that all these methods are available, but it doesn't mean that you have to buy out all these for interviews. Now, <clears throat> coming to strings, there are various methods available. One method is capitalized. Capitalize. So capitalize converts the first character of the string into a capital letter. <clears throat> and next one is case fold. So case fold is going to convert the entire string into lower. So we have already seen lower method. Case fold and lower are same. And coming to count, it will return the number of times a specified value occurs in a string. We have also already seen an example of this. How many times, for example, capital T has occurred in a word. We have seen that. And ends with. So ends with will return true if the string ends with a specified value. If you say ends with A, if the string ends with A, then it is going to return true. Okay. And next one is find. So it will search the string for a specified value and return the position where it was found first time. Okay. So if you have a string Ravi and if you write A, find A, it will say that A is present at index 1. And index. So index searches the string for a specified value and returns the position of where it is found. So find and index both are same. And E is alpha numeric. It will return true if the string contains alphabets and numbers, only alphabets and numbers, if any other symbols are there, it will return false. E is alpha. So it will return true if uh, the string contains only alphabets. If any other special symbol is there, it will return false. E is ASCII. It will return true if the string contains only ASCII values. Next one is E is decimal. It will return true if the characters in the string are all decimal values. And is digit, it will return true if the characters in a string are all digits, otherwise it will return false. Is lower, it will return true if the characters in the string are all in lower cases. And is numeric, it will return true if all the characters in the string are numbers. Is printable, it will return true if all the characters in the string are printable. Is space. It will return true if there is only space in the string, if it is an empty string, not empty string, if there are only spaces in the string, then it is going to return true. Is upper, it is going to return true if all the uh, characters in the string are in upper cases. Now join is going to merge the characters or strings together and will create one string. Lower is going to convert all the characters in a string to lower case. And L strip, it is used to strip spaces. Okay, it will return, it will in the left side, it, if there are any spaces, it will just trim them and it will give you the trimmed version. Replace is used to replace a specified value with a specified value. So you can replace all A's with B's, all B's with A's, something like that. And R find, R find is from the right side. It will search the string for a specified value and return the last position where it was found. The last position. Okay, it is not the first position. Earlier we have seen it will return the first position where it is found, but here it is going to find the last position. And R index is also same as R, R5. And split. If you want to split a string into multiple parts based on a character, we are going to use split. And we are going to see an example on split uh, in the next coming videos. Starts with, it will return true if the string starts with a specified value. Strip, it is going to trim the string on both the sides. If there are extra spaces on the left or in the right, it is going to trim it. Swap case, swap case is going to swap lower cases with upper cases and upper cases with lower case letters and title so it is going to convert your string into title case what is the title case if every word starts with a capital letter that is a title case and then upper 
upper converts a string into upper case. Okay, thank you. Hi, let's do a small program using list and random number generator, uh, which you have learned by now. So let us say you went to lunch with your friends and let us say you are not splitting the bill and someone has to pay the bill then who will pay the bill that is the question so let us say you are playing a small game where you are writing all the names of uh, people in the lunch on a paper on a small you know slip and you are actually putting the slips in the in a bowl and you are drawing a dry drawing a slip whoever wins or whose whose name here it is not winning whoever loses so whose name come in the list you are going to that that guy is going to pay for the entire lunch let us say this is the game that we want to play and we want to use list and we want to use random number generator in order to play this game so let us assume that uh, this is the uh, program where we are actually reading all the names of the users uh, separated by a comma and a space okay so we are reading all the names from the from the user and then we are splitting it you have seen the split function right so the split function which is used on a string is actually going to split the string based on the characters that you specify here i am specifying comma followed by a space i hope it is visible comma followed by a space so this comma followed by a space when you split the names you are going to get a list of all the names I'll show you the example. Let's run it. Let's try to print what we got in the names. Names will be a list. Let us say we are entering the names. Ravi, comma, followed by a space. You can also use comma, but it doesn't look good. All the names followed by commas, operated by comma doesn't look good. So Ravi. Uh, followed by comma space and then Balaji followed by comma space and then Santosh. Now these three people have gone for lunch. Now we our question is who has to pay the bill? So if you observe it, we are splitting it based on comma followed by a space. And if you see that we got a list. Names is a list here, and the list of all the names that you have entered. That is how split is going to work. Okay. Now the question is. How do you randomly select a person? That is the question. So you can use random number generator. Okay. So if you want to see who is who is present in the list at uh, position number one, you can see that. Ravi, Balaji, and Santosh names are entered. And now, this is the list we got. And at first position, we got Balaji. So similarly, we want to find out who is going to pay the bill. Okay. So how are we going to do that? We are going to import random. Wherever random numbers are required, we are going to import random. And random is not highlighted because we have not yet used it. Once we start using it, random will get highlighted. You can delete these print names also. So we want to randomly generate a number between all the names who are available in the list. But the problem is we don't know how many names are available in the list. That is where len function is going to be helpful. Len is a function which is going to give you number of elements in a list or number of characters in a string. You can use len for both the purposes. So I'm using, I'm trying to find out how many elements are present in the names, names list by using len. Now, number of num, num items is going to give you what is the how many items are present inside the list okay now using that we are going to generate a random number from 0 to num items minus 1 here it is important for you to understand that 0 is because we are starting from index number 0 in a list 
and you cannot go till number of items because let us say there are four number of items in the list but the indices will be from 0 to 3 that is why I am writing number of items minus 1 now we get a random number here okay so random choice equal to that so now we got some number randomly and that guy is going to pay so we are going to print that we are going to find out who is at that particular random position so the person who will pay is equal to names of random choice now we are printing who is going to pay that is an F string inside the F string we are going to use person who will pay is going to pay bill ok so this is a simple program where we have used len random numbers and a list in order to uh, find play this game so let's run it comma followed by a space if you don't want to use space that is up to you you can just split it based on comma so here we got Santosh is going to pay the bill today if I run it again it will give you a different output ok thank you now let's try to simplify this program even further so in order to find out a random number or random element in a list there is a function available in random called choice ok so random dot choice of if you pass a list it is going to give you uh, a random element so here instead of using randint we can directly find out the random element from the list by using random dot choice person who will pay the bill is equal to random dot choice and we are going to pass the list here the list is names now it will also do the same with the lesser number of lines So we got that Ravi is going to pay the bill today. Okay. Thank you.